Welcome. Uh, this is Professor Riera Pujol coming at you from UCF and uh, welcome again to Legal and Ethical Environment of Business. This is a bonus lecture um, because I want to revisit the controversy over the Brett Kavanaugh nomination to the United States Supreme Court. Um, you know, I've already done a bonus video, uh, but this was before these um, very serious allegations were brought uh, to the public's attention involving um, you know, really bad misconduct. Now, um, originally we saw the controversy was, well, what is Brett Kavanaugh's position regarding stare decisis? Would he overrule previous uh, settled law, previous cases, for example, establishing a woman's right to an abortion or establishing uh, certain protections for criminal defendants and that kind of thing? Uh, but now, um, and, 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 and by the way, I should say that was a nice way of illustrating something we talked about um, in the first part of the course, the principle of stare decisis, which is really when I talk about the common law and I talk about judge-made law, you cannot talk about the common law without really trying to understand stare decisis or the idea of precedent, that judges aspire to be bound by previous decisions that they've made. Now, um, the new controversy though is really um, uh, even you know, way above that. And here I just want to mention that controversy, not to, um, you know, I don't know if it's true or not. There's some hearings have been scheduled. We'll see what, how this plays out. But I do want to relate this very serious controversy to what we learned in the first part of the course. In fact, it was the very first substantive video after I introduced the course, and that is the idea of due process, specifically the burden of proof. If, um, you know, if you are a cable news junkie, you know, you see this, what all people are talking about. Uh, members of Congress are talking about. Uh, but the basic idea here is, think about it. Think to yourself, when somebody makes a serious allegation of misconduct, whether it's, you know, um, you know, not paying their taxes or assaulting another person, um, attempting to rape another person, it's very serious stuff. Um, who should have the burden of proof? Um, you know, what would be fair in that circumstance? Now, the thing about a congressional hearing or a Senate, you know, uh, confirmation hearing to the Supreme Court is that this is not a court of law. So we're just saying as a matter of fairness, you know, how should the hearing be conducted? Should the person making the accusation, what should we even call her? Should we call her a victim, a survivor, an accuser? Um, you know, what would be the right label without prejudging all of this stuff? Um, um, what do we call the accused, you know? Um, and who should have the burden of proving the truth uh, in these matters? I will say that there's, you know, uh, this is very controversial. You could probably make good arguments on all possible sides outside of the court context, you know, uh, where due process in the court system, the basic idea is that somebody levels an accusation, they have the burden of proof. Um, but. Um, maybe you want to transfer that general concept into a Senate hearing context. That would seem reasonable. Maybe you want to say, no, there's something unique about this when you're talking about this type of really serious misconduct that goes to the dignity of the person and the person being accused as uh, you know, being appointed to a very powerful position. Maybe that accused person should actually have the burden of proof. That may sound crazy to many of you, but I will tell you, for example, in so-called continental legal systems, if you're accused of a crime and if you're truly innocent, the burden is on you to prove your innocence. Otherwise, uh, you know, why would the police or why would the person make the accusation? Now here, of course, there's you know, politics involved, that kind of thing. Uh, but I just want to let you know that in principle, that burden shifting can occur. Last thing I want to mention, though, and this is important, Regardless of who should have the burden of proof, and like I said, perhaps arguments can be made on both sides, the next question is what should that burden be, in particular in this context of a Senate confirmation hearing? Should it be probable cause? Should it be a preponderance of the evidence, as we saw as used in civil cases, most business litigation, the plaintiff, the party bringing the case has to prove their case by a preponderance of the evidence? Should it be a clear and convincing standard, since we're talking about such delicate accusations here, delicate charges, really serious misconduct? Or should we import the criminal standard of beyond a reasonable doubt, given that 
Um, if these accusations are true, then Brett Kavanaugh has committed a, a crime, right? Um, so I throw that out there, not because I know all the answers, I don't, but to let you know that that's why I began my course talking about due process, talking about the burdens of proof. And you can see in real time in the Brett Kavanaugh hearings, how these fundamental ideas are really relevant um, in this matter. Well, thank you for your attention. Thank you for listening to watching this uh, bonus lecture. Um, have a great day. And um, next week and our next set of units, we'll be talking about corporate governance and corporate um, forms of doing business. All right. Thank you for your attention again. Have a great day.